everybody, it's Hussein Kabani, your favorite broker. And I'm sure you guys all know who this is by now, I hope. We've got uh, Varen with iConnect Mortgages here. Um, and we are going to talk about what everyone wants to know is how low the interest rates will go in 2024. It's going down to zero on a Black Friday. You think so? Black yeah. Friday sale? Yeah, we this is so. going to break the internet. <laughs> Vern says the interest rates are going to go to 0%. Black Friday sale. Black Friday sale. Okay. No, guys. Um, seriously, but uh, I mean, there have been some changes in the mortgage uh, rates already. Yep. Uh, I've been telling this to people. I'm even sick of hearing myself say it now. But it's like Bank of Canada didn't bring down the rate. No. But because of where the bond market is going, the rates have actually come down at the banks where you're getting your mortgages. On the right fixed now. rates. On the fixed rates, yeah. yeah. But have we not seen uh, any more of a discount on the variable either? It has, go it has gone down. For an example, on an um, insured mortgage, you can get prime minus 90 or prime minus oh, okay. 1. Actually, sorry, my, my, I lied. Prime minus 1.1. 1. 1. On an insured mortgage. On an insured mortgage. So less on than a 20 points down. On a, on a 20, 20 points down. So that leaves you at... Uh, 6.1. Okay, 6.1. On a variable rate. Okay, so these are already uh, rates that have gone down just because of the bond market kind of thing. So not on the variable, yeah. on the fixed rate. On the fix. So the bond rates has come down almost 90 basis yep. point from October 2023 yep. till today. And what what roughly have we seen in that case? Like, So what would a five-year fixed rate have looked out in October versus what we're looking at kind of now. It has came down roughly about 30 to 40 basis points. Okay, nice. On so, a five year so, fix. so we're already seeing that kind of a discount. Yeah. And I mean, it seems pretty clear, like the indications that we're getting of where things are going, that the rates are going to come down. Yep. With Bank of Canada actually lowering I think them they're now. predicting the rate, first rate cut, maybe quarter points by Q2 of next year. Yeah. And it, like, I mean... Obviously, it's not going to go down to where it was, but not we are going to start to see the rates come down starting next year. I think uh, CIBC was kind of saying, I saw a report, they're saying like even next year it might come down like 1.5% from Bank of Canada. I think that's a little aggressive, but... I think Benjamin Tal is predicting 2% down by end of 2024. End so of 2024. from 5 to so, 3%. Okay, so he's basically saying two points is going to come down next yep. year. Um, like obviously, that is going to cause something to happen in the market. Uh, like two, two things I'm looking at. One thing is obviously it's going to help people that are going to be renewing their mortgage firstly, right? Absolutely. Um, so already like, uh, cause what I'm, what I, whenever I talk to people about like mortgage rates and renewals and stuff like that, and people that are kind of waiting on the sideline to get deals right now, the first thing that they kind of tell me is, is that they're waiting for all these delinquencies to happen in order for them to go in. And uh, I mean, obviously, we don't have all the answers. It could be wrong. But I don't really think that we're going to see, like, this crazy uh, mass uh, delinquencies. I, I don't think so. And also, people are very savvy about it. If they see aff un affordability is an issue, they're also selling on their own as well. Yeah. Or they are kind of researching the debts and working with the professional to kind of keep the yeah. thing going as well, right? Yeah. So, but even, like, with the delinquencies, right? Like, I think, uh, like, I, I don't think that there's going to be that many of them because without Bank of Canada cutting the rates, we've seen them come down kind of already, and that's going to help people on the renewal. Uh, and then even when Bank of Canada does cut the rates, that's obviously going to help them out as well. Absolutely. And then there was some talk about like amortization, increasing the amortization, but we don't really see that possibly going anywhere at this point. Uh, we haven't, like government haven't changed any amendment to the Bill B20 to extend the amortization. I think what they are trying to work out is keeping the payment more affordable. Yeah. Uh, for an example, Scotia Bank, we talked about in the past as well. If we have an affordable issue, you can reach out to them and they will re- uh, capitalize. They will capitalize the mortgage payment by giving a three months break right. on the payment. So, I think they kind of work around that, not extending the amortization yeah. period. So, I think the government has put the pressure on the financial institution and the small lenders to kind of work with the lenders yeah. rather than putting them on a power of sale or put the lock, put the locks on the doors. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like no bank really wants to own your house. They like, don't want. They to. don't want to. So as long as like we were talking with uh, Jonathan Griffiths before as well, and he basically made it very clear that the bank doesn't want to own your house, and it's like they will work with you. Yeah. I mean, to a certain degree. Like if you have zero money and zero coming in, then there's nothing you can do with that. 
But the lenders like, always say is, uh, we are in a business not to own a property. When they lend the money, like when, especially when we're trying to make the deal works and when they go sideways, they say, we, we are not in the business to own the property. So yeah. they really don't want to have a delinquency yeah. uh, and they want to work with you. They don't want to put the locks on the doors. Yeah, exactly. So so we are seeing that the rates are going to start to come down. Uh, and, the, and that's obviously going to probably cause some people to go out there in the market and start to buy as well, right? Like So we could potentially see a lift in the market. Absolutely. I think I think the demand and supply issues is still there. It's yeah. never going to be gone. Yeah. Um, I think the buyers who's on the edge, they'll be coming forward. Yeah. Once they see a um, rate, rate, rate cut. Yeah. And we were kind of talking about it and I forgot the number, but even for like Black Friday, there was like huge amount of transactions that happened. There was a big amount of money that was spent. And we're saying that like, you know, uh, people out there still have money but they're really looking for good deals. So when they actually start to see good <clears throat> deals, then I think that they might start to enter the market. Like houses. Yeah, exactly. I have a feeling we are going to rebound. People are thinking the prices are going to come down, but I think before that, we are going to rebound on the prices. You think so, eh? Yeah. That's my feeling. And yeah. I'm, I'm talking to a few real estate professionals who's been really watching the market and being in the business for a long time. That's their predicting. Everyone's waiting for the price to come down before they realize the prices has price is not going to come down it's going to go back again yeah and, and it's going to be a quick rebound it's it seems like that to me too is like basically and, and we could be wrong and no one knows what's going to happen in like two three years from now just like we couldn't have predicted what would have happened going into covid right yeah um but it seems like right now what could happen is is that it seems like there's some deals out there right now and i think some of these deals will continue to brew and i think the savvy investors and buyers i think they're going to start to jump onto it right now and what that's going to do is that's going to spark the the the, the thing you know what the, I mean? the, like the like, demand exactly that's going to start to spike the demand and then people are going to start to get onto this whole thing and i think the form is going to kick in exactly yeah <laughs> and it's like okay well i didn't get in in december yeah. or january and here we are in april and the price has gone up 50 grand or whatever and i better get in now yeah. and then that's where you're going to see people start to yeah. jump onto this thing yeah. and it's going to go up the one thing i have to put out there as well is is that it's still kind of concerning if people are going to operate from that mentality and not be able to watch uh, how their personal budget works because it's a very personal and individual thing i would say at the same time because when we still look at the debt levels that uh, you know td bank was reporting today and whatever else like that was like 180 percent or something like that like there's a lot of consumer debt out there and even when we were having this conversation before we started recording and you're like there could also be a lot of people that are taking this money out of their line of credit or wherever else like that that's looking like consumer debt which kind of is now that you're just going to service your own mortgage at this point yeah we talked about it in the past as well right people are doing anything and any, anything and everything to yeah. keep the houses going like pawning the jewelry so getting the money from the line of credit that's the most cost efficient if you don't have a secure line of credit you're going to dip into the line of credit keep the payments going yeah. and hoping they can keep this going for so, such a long time so that could be the reason uh for the de credit card debts and the line of credits to be yeah. gone up as well and, and like i was saying like i think it's going to be a little bit like uh there's no uh one solution for everybody over here i think everyone has to evaluate their own personal thing and uh like i, I had a client that i was speaking with yesterday and they want to buy an investment property and they're like really leaning on me to tell them is this the right time or is it going to be the right time in six months or a year and it's really hard to say and the only thing i could really say it boils down to what you actually think is going to happen in the marketplace? Like, where do you think things are going to go? Because yep. th there is still two ways it can go. If we're really being realistic with people, it, it could go really, really well, or it could be really, really bad. Like, or, or there could be an in-between. Again, nobody knows, but it depends on what you think is going to happen and what your personal finances look like. I think it could be also, like, especially if you're talking to the buyer, I, I would say it also depends on the properties. Sure. Some properties are in a really, really good price right now. Yeah. I think there's a lot of desperate sellers. Yeah. Uh, and it's, if you're a good investor, you may want to get a, get into the property that's lowly priced. It may be not the best time to get in, but that property is the best time to get in. Yeah, like you're talking about this, just reminding me. I was like looking at the solds from yesterday, and in Whitby, there was a detached double car garage home sold for like $935,000. <clears throat> Like, I would not have ever thought that would be possible to get a detached double car garage for 935 in Whitby. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I was talking to someone last week, uh, North Whitby, um, really nice neighborhood, being in the Walmart, 1.1 with the ravine lot. Wow. We, they were selling townhouses for 1.1 yeah. two years back. Yeah. So, so there are good deals out there right now. Uh, and, you know, I truly believe that in the long run, and this is not to convince anyone to buy any kind of real estate whatsoever, but in the long this run, is a conversation. there's only one way. Yeah, there's only one way this is going to really go. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be worth 
more than what we're paying for it right now. Is it going to go back up to crazy levels? Eventually it will, but... We don't know when. Yeah, we don't know when. And, and look, is there a chance that it could still dip down a little bit more? I, th there you is obviously a chance that it could. But given the fact they're talking about the rate cut yeah. and, inf and uh, we are going into recession, I don't think the rates can go up. Yeah. Uh, so this is what I look at it. The demand and supply issue is still given, and that's one of the biggest issues in Canada, especially in Ontario, especially in Toronto. Yeah. And with the price, rates comes down, I can see it goes the other way around. Yeah, that it's going to pick up. Yeah. pretty quickly well, that's going to be interesting um aside from trying to predict rates and thinking where the market is going to go um there's something uh that you were talking to me about earlier and i think people want to hear about it as well is is that the rate buy down what does that even mean so what i will say is uh, this is old is new old is new yeah okay. so I've been approached by, by one of the gentlemen uh, I closely work with. He's been in this business for like a 40 plus years. He's come and tell me, when this is something that's been used in uh, 80s and 90s to get the properties moving. And is re so then I was talking to a lot of lenders. No one didn't seem to understand it. Then finally I got hold of someone at Scotia Bank, being there for 35 years. So they understand. <laughs> they understand each other's <laughs> language. He said, yeah, yeah, we do this all the time. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Then we started the review. So... Pretty much what that means is, uh, if you if you are stuck in a listing, you, if you cannot move the listing, you can buy down the rate of your buyer. Okay. So let's say, for example, we are t we just talked about rates are going to be coming down in a year from now. Yeah. Or, or six months from now. So let's say, for example, you have a $500,000 listing that's not moving. And let's say one year fix is 6%. You can buy, down, buy that down to 4%. Okay. From, so buy it down from 6% to 4%. 4%. That will cost you $10,000 wow. on interest. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Instead of, instead of doing a price reduction, yeah. you do a $10,000 yeah. buy down. And that will drop your monthly payment almost $625. That's awesome. And also, you'll qualify at 4% instead of 6%. Really? So the qualification changes as qualification well? Qualification changes as well. That's actually very interesting. So, so I mean, like, uh, I think that you're right. We're probably going to start to see this with like uh, savvy agents and yep. brokers out there starting to maybe even market this, right? Yep. Buy this house and pay 3.5 or 4% interest for the next one year or something. Absolutely. But you know what? Like, we already kind of saw this happening a little bit with builders, <coughs> where yep. builders couldn't move their properties. When, when they're doing a VTB. Yeah. Well, when they're doing a VTB, but like, uh, also, I saw some developments that were coming out there and saying like, you know, you buy in this development and we're working with rbc or something yeah, like that absolutely. and your rate's going to be three points or three yeah. and a half points yeah. uh, if you buy in our development for the next three years so they're obviously buying down these rates at the absolutely. same time absolutely yeah so it's a pretty neat thing uh, i would say it, it will put your property is more attractable yeah um, and it's more affordable as well right if you right. think about it, on a million dollar listing to buy down two percent is going to cost you twenty thousand dollars, dude. Uh, even even on a property like that, or like I'm thinking from my realtor perspective, which is like, hey, if I have a property next door that's a cookie cutter property, how do I stand out? This this is exactly what this is yeah. comes in handy. This this helps me stand out a lot yeah. more. Basically saying, hey, listen, we could be at the same price as them, and we can actually just buy down the rate, and we'll look a lot more attractive than them. Because yeah. it's really hard to differentiate your property when you're in a cookie cutter subdivision. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They're it's the same, same home, same size homes. Yeah. So, so what's especially the condos. Yeah. So what's the difference? This is huge. This is huge. And um, the other thing is, you don't have to be a seller to buy down. So yeah. let's say what I'm. What I also been told is, so, so let's say, for example, instead of parents give them extra down payment yeah. or the parents want to go on a co-signing, they can actually prepay the interest for the kids. So, you know what? I never uh, thought of that until you were mentioning it. So, like, that's pretty cool. So, you buy down the rate. It's six points right now. You buy it down to four points and yeah. you can qualify at that. So, like what you just said, like instead of your parents or somebody giving you money to help you get into the door, they can actually help buy down the thing. So, you can like buy down the rate. Yeah. So, you can actually qualify for that mortgage. Absolutely. So, that would be an interesting way to try to qualify for a mortgage as well. 100%. Can you do that on your own to buy down the rate? Yeah, you can do it on your own as well. So, so who can buy down the rate then? So we are, is the, the lender has to be on option to do that, right? So I, I made phone calls to a few lenders, like knowing exactly how it works. Some lenders are not doing it. Okay. And, and I only know only two lenders right now. Really? Yeah. So you only know two lenders that will do it. That can you share? Uh, one is Scotiabank yeah. and one is First National. Okay, so these are the only two right now that yeah. will work on that. Then I reached out to TD. 
HSBC, they are not 100% sure about it. I'm yeah. not too sure about RBC and CABC. That's something I will probably start digging into it. Yeah. So this is something the lenders I work with, right? Right, the right. Scotia Bank and First Net. So at least they have an option of doing it this way. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, so that's a really good option right now, a buy down. Uh, yeah. Especially if you think that the rates are going to come down and you need to make this move right now. Uh, that might actually a one be a good thing for yourself, though. <clears throat> so the... The bigger the term, the longer the term is going to cost you more money to buy down. Yeah. So it's better to do it on a one-year term yeah. and make it very attractive. Yeah. And we've been, everyone's been talking about there will be a rate cut in 2024. Yeah. So the prices are going to be come down. And even if you think about it, like this uh, opinion came up. So we are doing a stress test at four plus two. What happens if the rate doesn't come down next year? You're still going to qualify at the same rate anyways. Yeah, true. So monthly payment is going to be the same. Yeah. So you would have paid 6% anyways. Exactly. Okay, so so that's a good point. Um, the other thing that we don't have so much information on, and I got myself into it a little bit, okay, on a, on a deal that I did, and uh, that was an assumable mortgage. Uh, and I started to learn about assumable mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, in the time that I've been in the business for the past 12 or 13 years, we really it's haven't not, had to do that, yeah. right? And it hasn't been a very popular thing, but it was a popular thing back then. Back then, yeah. Um, one of the things I found out, which was very interesting while we were walking through the process, is, is that uh, the original seller actually still gets tied to that assumable mortgage. So sometimes you have to be careful, kind of, with the liabilities that are associated with it. It's like a lease buster. Is it lease busters also will keep but, you on? No, actually, my fault. Yeah. I don't think so. Like yeah. you just transfer everything over yeah. to. But, but with this mortgage, apparently you stay on. And, and the messed up part about what I found out was is that if, if somebody takes your mortgage, they assume the mortgage, and then they renew that mortgage, you're still on the hook for it. Hmm. The only way you actually get off of the hook of this When the thing, term is up. When they refinance it, yeah. Like either they leave that bank or they completely refinance it. What about it. when the term is up? No, when you renew it, you're still attached to it. That's a long-term commitment. That's what I'm saying. So, so as a seller, how is it attractive for you? It's not. It's so, not. so we were Actually, you're taking more liability then. Yeah. So we were working this deal where we thought it would be great that somebody could assume this rate. You know yeah. what I mean? And we we're kind of working along that. And uh, when we were getting to the closing process, this is where we found out all the liabilities because we kind of did a high levels check. And, and my client's very thorough. She was going through all of the paperwork and actually found out that they won't actually get released from it. Then we got... Jonathan involved and got more information from him. So it's a little bit more technical and I'm still trying to learn about it, but th you can't get released from this thing yeah. to a certain point. That's unless pretty scary the bank really wants you to out. So it's something to be careful about. But listen, if, if you're in a situation where you have a really good fixed rate mortgage and you really need to get out of that property, you may be willing to assume that. See, in our situation over here, that person was putting like more than 50% down payment. So then at least you could feel a little bit comfortable that... Yeah. You know, they, they can yeah. keep up the payments. Yeah, they can keep up the payments or they have a lot to lose at the same time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like uh, that's that's kind of what I saw with Assumable. So we have the rate buy down and we think that the rates will probably come down and that's spike the, the market. Yeah, I think the spring, we, we'll probably see how it, how things are going to be planned out in early March, April. Yeah. And uh, like, and every time we kind of talk about this, we're always kind of saying the same thing. And it's not to encourage anybody to sell their property or, or trying to do anything out of that. But like, when it really comes down to it, if you run all of your numbers and you can't afford the property that you're in for whatever reason, it's best to just get rid of it. Yeah. Early I, I as agree. possible. I agree. Because... Uh, we've talked about it and I'll repeat myself is, is that I think that there's a lot of society pressure and you thinking yourself that, Oh, it's going to look bad. And you know, I need to try to hold on to this thing. And you kind of run all of your options where you leave yourself in a very bad position. Right. And then you, and then you try to do a quick sale and you actually end up losing even more. So you've taken out money from maybe a line of credit, credit card, borrow money from friends family. and family kind of thing. Uh, you've put that money in to try to see if you can maintain. Uh, and then you've wasted your time on trying to be able to market and sell that property correctly. And then now you have a short period of time to try to sell it. And you got to take whatever you can get for that property. You're back against the wall at the point. Exactly. So it's probably better for people to get ahead of this. So I'm sure you're probably getting some kind of calls where people want additional financing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, the nature. So the newest call, more of the calls come these days. I need, I need to keep up the payment going. They, they don't come to the point straight up. I yeah. need the money. They want to do a renovation. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what we're talking about. Like, you, it's, it, they don't feel comfortable saying that yeah. I'm in this position, <clears throat> right? Because it's the image. But also keep in mind, like, even if you take from the line of credit or if you borrow the money in any form, 
you are making it more unaffordable for you. Correct, because you got to pay that back. Anyways. And if if you're taking from a savings to keep the payments going, that completely understandable. That's what the savings are for for the rainy days. But if it's come from any form of borrowing, even on a secure line of credit, you're borrowing at prime plus half. That's almost at seven eight percent right yeah. now. Yeah. So, so you're making the situation worse for worse, yourself. if anything, right? Yeah. And to the point, yeah, when it's coming down to the crunch, you don't even have any negotiation skills. You are Correct. going to lose yeah. more than what you would have gained. So so I think what we would also say is, is that even if you're not in that position right now, right? Because you have a lower interest rate because you, you locked into something and maybe your mortgage is going to come up in 18 months from now or two years from now. Maybe you have to start looking at it right now and basically saying, hey, maybe in the springtime, we're going to see a bit of a lift over here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're going to see a bit of a lift in, in prices. And maybe it's better for me to get ahead of this thing. Because if I have a 1.5% interest rate right now and I go back and I say, let's just say the best rate you're going to probably get is 4.5% at that time, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm that, just taking that's still guess. a 300% increase in the yeah. payment. So, so just calculate it at that and then just feel it out and say, hey, do I feel comfortable doing this? Yeah. And if you don't, then I would say, don't wait until that 18 months. Uh, if you can see something that's going to happen positively for you in terms of pricing in this spring market, maybe you want to get ahead of that curve right now. And we are going to New Year. Maybe it's a good time to, you know, we are approaching holidays. Maybe spend some time together as a family and look at your finances. Look yeah. at your budget. Yeah. And, and, and I know people moved around a lot because of COVID as well, right? Because yeah. we a lot of uncertainty. Maybe you were okay in a smaller space because you were running around doing the X, Y, and Z or whatever else like that. Maybe you moved into a bigger space that you don't necessarily need anymore. So just don't evaluate it from the financial stuff and how people will view you. Evaluate it from the actual space that you have as well and say, does this actually make sense for our family at this point right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. And, and get ahead of that as much as possible. Because the faster you try to get ahead of that, if that's something that's going to actually happen, the better chances of you netting out more and being able to uh, move yourself in a positive direction quicker. Yeah. And also, we, we talked about it as well, right? That if, you're, if you don't own a car, if you're on a lease, if your lease is coming up for yeah. any while, so budget that in terms of calculations as well. Correct. So the lease payments are going up by anywhere You're right. from three to 400 bucks as well. Yep. So if you have two cars, you already have 800 bucks on the lease payments and your mortgage payments are going to go up by 300%. So you yeah. need to budget Good point. every single thing. Good point. Because we were talking about that. That same thing that happened with my truck. So like when I got my truck two years ago, I think it was like 1.99. Yeah. And right now I'm going to try to get the same truck again. It's like 7.99. That's almost like a 400% increase. And, in and it makes a big difference on my payment, payment already. Yeah. And that's why I'm like payment shock. I was like, fine, the, the truck went up. A little bit of money, but not as much. But yeah. the interest is where I'm really getting killed on. So good point. If you have two lease vehicles, you got to definitely take that into account as well, right? Because that Absolutely. payment is going to go up. So you got to decide. You're going to buy out that vehicle. You're going to release a new one. Get ahead of all of that. All right, guys. So I think we had a very interesting conversation here today. And uh, any final thoughts leaving 2023 and going into 2024? I d what I can say is it's a, it's a tough 2023. We all had our own challenges. Yeah. So just find out your pinpoints and find out your challenges and budget yourself for 2024. Yeah. Sit down and be truthful to your numbers and say what you can do and what you cannot do. Yeah. And if you cannot do something, don't feel pressured. Yeah. Do what's right for you and your family. Yeah. And try to get ahead of it. And try to get ahead of it. Awesome. Yeah. Really appreciate you coming on again, man. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me again. Awesome. And if you're looking to connect with an awesome mortgage guy to help you get your new year straightened out and get those uh, numbers correct, I encourage you guys all to connect with uh, Varen from iConnect. Uh, we're going to have his contact information up on the screen. Also, if you guys want to DM me, more than happy to share uh, his contact information with you guys directly as well. And we're always curious to see what you guys thinking of what's happening in the mortgage uh, uh, with the interest rates and what do you guys think is going to happen in the market. Please leave your comments below. I know we're going to have some negative Nancys out there and I always love hearing back from you guys as well. Until next time, guys, remember one thing. Get Cabani, get sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold.